Good morning. Welcome to worship on this lovely day. We had another sprinkling of rain, so we're grateful. Uh, already starting off the day with gratitude with the sun we've had and the rain we've had and the, the birds flying around. It's just a lovely day to be here. A few announcements before we begin. Tomorrow there will be Bible study happening at 10 o'clock. We're looking at a chapter in the book of Hebrews and using that to bounce back into the Old Testament to explore the stories that the Hebrews text is referencing. So sort of a New Testament, Old Testament blend. Um, that'll be at 10 tomorrow. And also in the evening tomorrow, there'll be worship happening at Our Saviors here, which will be basically this worship service again, plus communion. So if you're like, oh, fun, I loved this worship service. I'll do it again and take communion too. That will be happening tomorrow at 6.30, and the Ed Committee meeting will immediately follow that worship service. And then looking further ahead, on September 6th, there will be a welcome meeting. That's the women of the ELCA. And usually about this time, they're meeting to talk about the fall dinner. And we uh, are, I think, in need of talking about this event and seeing like what is possible for us to do, what might we choose to do as a, a fall uh, activity, because I know that um, they could use some support in this uh, endeavor. It's such a big ministry that we provide. So if you'd like to think of ways to help out with the fall dinner or even think of different ministry offerings that we might offer in the fall, that meeting will be happening at 4.30 here at Our Saviors at, um, at 4.30 on September the 6th, which is a Wednesday. And then looking further ahead, September 10th, uh, there's a couple things happening. First off, Melo is having their fall dinner. Do they still call it dinner? It's the afternoon meal. Did I say that wrong? Oh my goodness. Okay, the afternoon meal. Melo hosts an afternoon meal on September 10th. Uh, so after worship, if you would like to head out there and support them, they'll be having a really tasty meal. I think it's pork and potatoes and corn and fresh vegetables and all that. And then that same evening of September 10th at 5, we'll, having, we'll be having a confirmation meeting. So if you have confirmation age children, 7 through 9th grade, or if you know people that have confirmation age children in that bracket, please make sure they know about that meeting. And then Rally Sunday is the 17th of September, so we're getting back into the program year, so looking forward to all the activities that are on the horizon. Those are the announcements I have, so let's take a moment to center our hearts on God. Hmm. Preparing our hearts to worship him. And then we'll begin with the call to worship. Good morning. Today's psalm comes from 138. We'll read it responsibly. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name. <coughs> and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of the trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me. O oh Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. My 
shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy. There's to the promise I have in you. Twice. Twice. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days I want to praise the, the wonders of your mighty. and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down, seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have wandered from your will. We have held back from sharing your bounty. We have faltered in trusting you completely. We have spoken ill of our neighbors and have been silent about your goodness. Forgive us our sins and guide us back to your way of love and life. Amen. God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. Let his free gift of love guide you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us join in praying together. O oh God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Amen. You may be seated for the reading. Today's reading comes from the book of Romans, chapter 12, beginning with the first verse. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. 
For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortion, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus came to the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do the people say that the Son of Man is? And they responded, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, one of the other prophets. Then Jesus asked, But who do you say that I am? And Simon answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father in heaven. And I tell you, you are called Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then Jesus told his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and we'll continue with the song after the children's sermon. So that means you. (laughs) Sorry, you just sat down so nice to you. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The old saying goes, a building is only as strong as its foundation. 
Now, I'm no engineer, so I decided to ask Google, is this true? Can a house be built without a foundation? Can a house stand without a foundation? And an engineering website popped up and said, well, of course you can build a house without a foundation if you don't want it to stand for very long, which goes to show just how important a foundation is to a building. A building can be strong and sturdy on its own, but a foundation gives it extra support so that if uh, there is contracting of the building or expanding due to weather conditions or if the soil begins to erode or if there is just some sinkage happening that all of it will happen uniformly so that the building doesn't end up lopsided tilting because if that happens if part of a building starts to sink and other part of the building is lifted up that can create cracks that can create crumbling and apparently some buildings even just fall apart from that strain that gets added without a proper foundation. Having a solid base helps the thing that's on top of that solid base, uh, whether that be a house or a church or a garage. Um, it really helps what's on top to stay nice and sturdy, to have a strong foundation. And when we talk about organizations and even families, I think we often say a similar thing that a strong foundation helps to keep those relationships strong. Humans are different than bricks and beams, but we still need to be held together, and we still experience tension, right? We have conflicts with each other, we have disagreements, uh, which can feel like a storm beating against the house, but if we have a strong base, like if we've established mutual trust for each other or if we've done the slow work of getting to know each other and building accountability, then that helps to provide sturdiness that can withstand some of the tension that comes our way. And in our gospel lesson today, Simon, who is named Peter, which means rock, is told that he is going to be the rock on which the church is going to be built, which means essentially that Jesus is telling Peter that he is going to be part of the foundation for the community of Christ. Now, as we've already been saying, this is an important role because that foundation determines how strong the structure on top is going to be. And Jesus says so himself in a teaching he gives earlier in the Gospel of Matthew in Matthew chapter 7 when he's giving the Sermon on the Mount. He says, a person who hears my words and acts on them will be like a wise person that built their house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been built on rock. The same is not said for the house that's built on sand. When the storms come and rage, then the whole house falls down. So by naming and declaring Peter to be the rock, Jesus is saying that Peter's leadership will form a foundational piece that the church will rest on, which is great. Good for you, Peter. What an important role to land among the disciples. But I'm just going to say it's pretty baffling that Jesus makes this choice to name Peter as an integral part of the foundation of the church, given what we know about Peter. Like Jesus is talking to the same Peter that we know, right? The Peter that will step out of the boat and onto the waves and then start to sink because his faith is shaken. I mean, very fitting for a person called Rock to start to sink, but seriously, this Peter who needs to ask Jesus clarifying questions often on what Jesus means when he's teaching the disciples. This Peter, who Jesus will say, get behind me, Satan, when he tells Jesus to not go to the cross, to not die, which is something that will happen in next week's gospel, which happens right after the conversation we heard in today's gospel took place. Are we talking about the same Peter that will have bickering arguments with the other disciples about who among them is the greatest. And the same Peter 
that when the situation gets really tense and Jesus ends up being brought before the priests in order to condemn him, he will deny that he ever knew Jesus. This Peter, Jesus is talking about this Peter, right? Doesn't it seem like he could have picked a stronger foundation if that is the case? Like foundations, we're looking for people that are solid, that will withstand the challenges and the changes as they arise. We're not looking for someone that is wishy-washy or maybe is only strong sometimes and is going to be fleeing the next. It's not what a foundation is for. So why is Peter named part of the foundation of the church? If the church is going to stand, the base needs to be steady. And if the rock isn't solid, well, why are we building on that? Well, we look then back to the gospel and we find that before Jesus makes this declaration to Peter and before he names him Peter, he says, Peter says who Jesus truly is. He says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus says that Peter didn't discover this just through observing, not through flesh and blood, Jesus says, but this was revealed to you by my father who is in heaven, which reveals to us something about why Jesus would say the church can be built on Peter. It's because Peter is allowing God to teach him, to work through him, to reveal truth to others through him. It has nothing to do with the goodness of Peter, how A grade of a stone he is, or his, his exemplariness. It's not about that. It's about the foundation on which Peter himself is set. And we hear about that foundation uh, from another disciple of Jesus, the Apostle Paul, who uh, is someone that we consult in our own faith whenever we read his letters in the scriptures. And he writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, that no one can lay a foundation other than the one that has been laid. That foundation is Jesus Christ. Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one, the son of the living God, He is the foundation, the strong foundation who will withstand the storms and erosion and all the weather conditions and the troubles and chaos that can be thrown at it. And when someone is built on this stone, they might not be strong in themselves, but they'll have strength enough to be able to stand steady so that maybe those that come after them will also be able to stand steady. Like Peter provides, Peter shows that even while he can be this wishy-washy disciple, he's also one that's always returning to that solid foundation. He knows his need for Jesus, and so he's always returning. Like when he starts to sink into the ocean and he cries out, Lord, save me, and Jesus fishes them out. Or when he continues to ask Jesus questions because he knows, I might not get it, but Jesus sure does. And even after he denies Jesus three times, the scripture tells us that he then went away weeping bitterly because he recognized what he had done wrong. And then he is one of the first disciples to try to see the resurrected Jesus once he hears that he has risen from the grave. And this same Peter, once Jesus has been taken up into heaven, then tries his best to be solid, to be a solid base for the newly budding Christian community that is forming. We hear about that in the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, which talks about what did the disciples do after they didn't have Jesus with them anymore. And I'll just tell you one story from there. In Acts chapter 5, It says that Peter and the other apostles were brought before the chief priest and the council of elders, and they were told to stop teaching about Jesus. 
They had been spreading the word of Jesus far and wide, particularly in Jerusalem to start off with, and I think the Council of Elders felt that their own foundation was starting to shake from people suddenly being converted and changed, and they weren't sure how to stay solid, so they told them the solution is you guys stop talking about Jesus, just stop. And to show that they're serious, they have the disciples flogged and then release them. Now, had the disciples been standing in their own strength that whole time, that might have been enough to convince them to stop, to not proclaim the name of Jesus anymore, to just say, okay, I don't want to be beaten up. I get it. We're just going to stay silent. But they show that they have a strong foundation beneath them because instead of quitting, instead of running away and giving up, the scripture says that they left that place rejoicing. Rejoicing because they had been worthy of experiencing what Jesus had experienced. And then it says every day in the temple and at home, they did not cease to teach and proclaim Jesus as the Messiah. They had their firm foundation in the Messiah, the Christ, and that gave them the strength to do this really hard thing, to be a support for their fellow believers at that time and for people that had yet to believe. And we're Christians in part today because of that witness given by Peter and given by the communion of saints across time and space, those we've never met, Christians that have existed across the centuries, and also Christians that we've had a chance to know who've been mentors to us, or teachers, or fellow encouragers, perhaps people in your family, or people in this very assembly. As we find ourselves set on a foundation, we find strength, for ourselves, and we can even become strength for others. So I encourage us on this day to not overlook the significance of the witness of the Christians that have lived across time. Let's give thanks for their witness, for the people we've known and for the people we have never knew, that they continue to pass on this word that Jesus is the Messiah. And let's do our best to be as strong as we can. And if nothing else, to keep returning to that solid foundation, which is Jesus the Christ, so that we can help to build up each other and build up the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Thy name. 
worship and adore you. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Please stand as you're able. And let's join together in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. God who sees, as places in the world experience man-made and natural disasters, draw near with your strength to tend to the afflicted and direct the hands of aid workers. Especially we lift up those impacted by the fires in Maui and Canada, the storms on the West Coast, the drought in the Horn of Africa, and the war in Ukraine. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Creator God, you make all that is, both seen and unseen. Thank you for every creature that lives, from the smallest organism to the largest whale. Continue creating in this world so that all life may flourish. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Adonai, you are a compassionate healer. Rest your hand upon all who are experiencing unwellness in their bodies, minds, and spirits, that they may be well especially Don and Shirley Vansicle, Liz Yedo, Brooks Hansen, Elise Davey, Landon Labine, Belinda Foles, David Miney, Beck Giesecke, Connie Traska, Laura Jean Carlson, Veronica Stengram, and those we name before you in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Son of the living God, you gave your life so that the world may be free from sin and death. Teach us your way of self-giving love, that we who are knit together as your body may use our gifts for the good of all and for your glory. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of all the saints, the faithful departed find their rest in you. Sustain us who yet live in this world, the hope and peace only you can provide until we come at last to our heavenly home. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please share a sign of peace with one another. You may be seated and we'll continue with the offering.
join in praying together. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able for the blessing. And while the blessing is being spoken, I invite you to make the sign of the cross following the directions within the blessing. May God be in your head, may God be in your heart, may God be on your left, and may God be on your right. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Verses 1 and 3. Thanks be to God.